If somebody brings in a five-month-old cat yep. and it's one of these crusty eyes, sneezing, yep. uh, mucoperiolent discharge from the eyes, you know, I'm sure you um, a combo test them for leukemia and the FIV virus. Yep. And and then beyond that, and to help them do your physical, do, do you frequently do also CBCs or do you lots of times start with therapeutic trials of, of antibiotics? And, 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 you know, which antibiotics do you use? I, I mean, uh, where I'm from, we have our favorites. In fact, our favorites are different than they were 10 or 12 years oh, ago. Sure, yeah. sure. Absolutely. That's such a common scenario. You know, right. The young cat with upper respiratory disease. Yeah. Right. And, and lots of times <laughs> these cats kind of come with a little story with them that says, um, my sister-in-law found this cat uh, six weeks ago and yada, yada, yada. And so you're kind of left at this, this um, they're giving you this inference that they maybe don't want to spend a thousand dollars on yeah. this cat. They just want yeah. to make it better. So if they came in and I and, and we would do the combo test, right. where would you take it from there? Well, it's a young cat, you know, so that immediately puts you in a certain category of things you think of that are likely etiologies for the upper respiratory tract disease. So, you know, I'm going to think um, it's likely he's got a herpes virus, for example, that'd be at the top of my list with some secondary bacterial infection. So in an otherwise uh, young healthy cat combo test negative. Um, I think it's perfectly uh, reasonable that you would move from there on to a therapeutic trial with uh, antibiotics. And if I have a fairly high index of suspicion, it's herpes virus. I might use some herpes virus specific treatments as well. So you know, talking about antibiotics, um, I think that when you're going to prescribe an antibiotic in that case, it's uh, good to think of what are the spectrum of pathogens that that cat could have. Um, in addition to his herpes virus, and what antibiotic is going to give me the broadest you know, range of activity. So probably the two that I reach for the most often would be uh, uh, an antibiotic like uh, 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 clavamox, for example, so amoxicillin clavulanate combination, mm -hmm. or doxycycline. Doxycycline is probably one of my favorite antibiotics in, in cats. With the caveat that we have to give it in a liquid form, uh, because as hopefully most of us know now, right. you know, we have this issue of esophageal irritation. So that aside, doxycycline is pretty broad spectrum in that situation. Suspension, easy to dose in little kittens, not that expensive, great way to go. At one point in time we used, to, and we still do, use a lot of Zithromax. Um, yeah. Do you yeah. like that drug too? No, maybe or? not as much as I used to. You know, I, I had that point um, where I climbed on the Zithromax bandwagon, Zithromycin, and, and I, 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 I would place it below doxycycline now in efficacy, I think. So it has the advantage of less frequent dosing. Right, you and know. it'll last longer once you yeah. get done. Yeah, you know, so depending on the, on, uh, how easy it is for the client to medicate the cat. That might, you know, sway you one way or the other with your drug choice. Well, my experience now has been sometimes when I'm using Zithromax, and I do, I like it because it's every other, I, I, we give it every, every other, other day. day. And then I do it for 12 days. And sure. really, with the, with the acknowledgement that I'm probably going to get uh, 20 days or 22 days because it's going to last for about 10, 12 days after the last dose. But I notice they, they get better and then they come back. Yeah. And that's when I go, that's when we, and so I'm almost in that boat now to where uh, I'm grabbing doxycycline half the time, I'm grabbing Zithromax, but I'm not, yeah. I really don't use that much of the uh, uh, Clavamox yeah. as, as much as I used to. For one thing, um, it has uh, some side effects, uh -huh. really, you know. The, More so than the others, uh, I think, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And the vomiting uh, mm -hmm. portion the GI of the stuff, yeah. yeah. And then is that how you kind of diagnose the herpes? Hey, listen, if I've given doxycycline and or Zithromax, and it keeps coming back, this must be yeah, so herpes. It, yeah, that, that makes me think there's an underlying you know, viral yeah. component. So it, uh, if I'm very suspicious it's herpes, we'll usually get those kittens on lysine you know, sure. as well. We now have some pretty feline-friendly formulations of lysine to give, right? right? Which we didn't have years ago. Well, yeah. let me ask you this. Now, why, is, why have the food companies not come out with a, a lysine-rich food? There is one, oh, actually. Is. Oh. Royal Canin, um, their queen diet, so it's, you know, it's a very uh, narrow-use diet, um, it is lysine um, added. Now, I will tell you that, you know, at first I thought that's an interesting concept. Now, um, and there's some research to back this up that says lysine probably needs to be bolused not fed, you know, continuous at continuous dietary levels, but it's probably more effective if you administer it to the cat in two, like twice a day, two boluses, rather than they eat it in their diet. All day long? Yeah. Is this in a dry food? Yeah, it's in a dry okay. food, yeah. The dose isn't high enough in a um, meal, yeah, yeah. So I think it, right now it needs to be given as a, you know, a, a, a discrete supplement, I think, okay. yeah. But that, that diet could be used in conjunction with that. 
to probably help. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. You know, it is it is a diet um, that's specific. The, the one we're talking about, the Royal Canin Queen for uh, reproducing cats. Um, so, you, you're not going to be using it um, every okay. day.